In this video, we're going to talk about using incremental refresh in a different way. Typically, incremental refresh is used with sources that support query folding like databases uh, and is a great way to significantly reduce the length of your refresh time. Um, often, you know, citizen developers, maybe they don't have access to a database and they're limited to just report exports and they end up building Power BI data sets that are the combination of many of those export files. And if you've done this, you know as you get to combining a lot of files or if you're doing a lot of transformation over each file, it can really start to slow down. So fortunately, there is a way to use incremental refresh with these sources as well for any kind of a file store. Um, if you have a date time column or you can generate a date time column uh, as I'll show, uh, so that you have something to use in each of the incremental refresh partitions. I'm going to show you a demo with uh, using the SharePoint folder connector, but really it would work with you know files from your hard drive or uh, uh, any kind of data lake store, uh, etc. Uh, just a reminder, if these videos are helpful to you, please go ahead and subscribe to the Hoosier BI YouTube channel. All right, so let's set this up. If I go to um, my SharePoint site, I've got this document library and this folder uh, that has sales files for each month. And I've gone ahead and made sure I embedded the date inside each one so we know what the scope of the data is in each file. Um, and so if I look at what the end result's going to be, just to show you why we're talking about this, um, if I were to just combine those files with no incremental refresh, as shown in this one, and I go to this data set and look at its refresh history, you can see that uh, it took about two minutes for every refresh. And again, this is a small number of files, 11 files, with next to no transformations. I'm just pulling data straight out of a out of a table in Excel, so kind of ideal conditions there. Um, so still not that very long, but again, if you're watching this, maybe you, you've got more files or doing more complex transformations and your query is taking uh, you know a half hour or longer to refresh. So if we look at the version I'll show you in the demo uh, with incremental refresh, and we look at its refresh history, you can see that the initial load here also took about two minutes, so that's when it does the full refresh of all partitions. But then after that, it's only going to refresh the latest partition, and now we're getting like 10, 12 seconds uh, for each refresh, which makes sense if you have you know 11 files, 10, 12 seconds each, you get to about um, two minutes. All right, so let's talk about uh, how to how to set this up. So if we go back to sort of the starting point. Okay, and this is all going to be in the query editor. And the 5.5 million there was just there's 11 files, and I put 500,000 rows of data in each one of junk data, and adds up to 5.5 million. So this is pretty standard um, Power Query out of the box functionality, where I use the SharePoint uh, folder connector. I put in the URL. Um, and then go from there, filtered it down to that document library that I showed. Here we have the 11 files. Um, and during the wizard, I would have said, hey, combine the files. Or you can click here and get that combined files dialog where you pick, pick you know, is it the first file you want to use as the example? Um, and then all this stuff is automatically generated for you. Uh, a parameter, um, this query where you could do additional transformations on each file. This one is super simple. I'm just basically pulling the data out of a table called sales in each file, and that's it, no transformation. That stuff is automatically synced with this function uh, to do those transformations on each file, and then that's used in um, the main query that returns the data. So I'm just going to minimize that. We really aren't going to need that at all. Um, but if we, if we look, uh, again, we've got the files filter down. We really don't need this filtered um, hidden file step that's automatically generated. Um, but it's this step here where we invoke that custom function. That's the expensive step because now I've got my 11 rows for 11 files and then it would go and use that function on all 11 files and then combine the data. And that's what takes time. So it's really at this point in the query 
that we want to start doing some pre-filtering so that in each partition, once uh, Power BI service kicks in with those incremental refresh partitions uh, so that I'm only processing one or a few files at a time. So to do that, uh, I need to set up some things for this to work. Okay, And so the first thing I need are some parameters. So I'm going to go to Manage Parameters. Um, one parameter is automatically generated when you do the combined file, so I'm going to create two new parameters. An incremental refresh for data sets requires you to set up two parameters, uh, one called range start that needs to be a date time. And I'm just going to go ahead and choose the first of this year. And then I need a second one. And these are case sensitive uh, called range end, also a date time. And I'm going to choose February 1st. And that's just so that when I uh, filter on these, I end up with one, one file per partition. So I'm going to have monthly partitions. So if I go back here, before the expensive custom function step, um, and I'm going to do my filtration here. So I need a date time column or something that can uh, we can use these parameters to filter them. And so you could use date modified or date created, but I encourage you not to do that. Um, certainly date modified could change if somebody peeks at the file, they may save it and the date modified changes. And date created should be fairly constant, but if later you move the files to a different location, you may end up with, you know, depending on how you do that, new date created uh, dates. And it, or if you do a bunch of exports on the same day for past months, for example, they're going to have, you know, the date created is not going to reflect the scope of the date in the file. So that's why you should um, use the uh, embed the date in the in the file name. So let's show one example on how to do that. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to control click these two things in this order so that name shows up first and then I'm going to do remove other columns. Okay. And now I'm going to extract the date from, from the file name. And so I'm just going to do a transform step. And I'm going to extract. I'm going to do text between delimiters. I've got, I intentionally put that underscore there. And then I've got the period before XLSX that I can use. So I'm going to do that. And XLSX. And it's going to pull out just the date component of that. And now I could convert that to a date. Which that should work. Good. Now I've got a date column. I'm going to rename this to file date. Okay. Uh, and so now I'm going to go ahead and do my filtration step. And again, all these are happening pretty fast. So these steps will all happen for each partition. But once we filter it down, it's only going to do the expensive invoke custom function step uh, on one file at a time. So I'm going to do a date filter, and I'm going to do between. And we're going to change these in the formula bar in a second. Or I could just do this and, um, well, I'm going to just pick um, that. And then it's important that you do just is before here and not is before equals so that you don't end up with duplicate data between two partitions. Okay, and again, I'm just trying to intentionally filter to um, one file. And so that should leave me with just the January file, and it does. So now what's left is to change uh, this in the formula bar to use our range start and range end parameters. And since those are date time, and this filter is working on file date, which is just the date type, we need to wrap range start and range end and date dot from. And less than date dot from range end. Okay, and so we should end up with the same one file here since I had the same values hard coded as what's in the current on the parameters currently. Okay, and so now the rest um, should work. Um, there are uh, since we renamed that to file date, we're going to have to correct a couple steps here. Uh, the invoke custom function is working. Uh, this one 
uh, I renamed it from source name to name. I'm just going to delete that step. Here, I just need to fix wherever that name column is referenced to file date. The expand should be fine. And then the change type, uh, I just need to get rid of the changing of the type on the name column. We don't need that anymore. And so once I do that, we've got the data for, for one file. Now we just do close and apply. And this needs to successfully finish, but it's off of just one file, so it'll go quite a bit faster. Um, and we'll see this row count change from 5.5 million to 500,000 for just one file. Then once that completes, we can set up the incremental refresh, and then we're done. All right. So now that that's done uh, and we've incorporated those range start and range end parameters into our query, we'll then be able to hit the ellipsis by the table we want to set up incremental refresh on, choose incremental refresh. Uh, we do have a warning here about non-foldable queries. So in our case, it's not folding, but it's still going to be a lot faster because we're filtering before we get to the expensive step. And so now I can turn on incremental refresh. I'm going to set it for 12 months, but in practice, maybe you do more so that it's ready for future months. And then I'm going to just incrementally refresh. So when we publish this to the service, Power BI is going to dynamically replace the range start and range end parameters with the values for each of these month partitions. Um, the first time it loads the data, it's going to load all 12 partitions, so that'll take longer. But then after that, it's just going to do it for the most recent partition, which will filter it to just the most recent file. So I hit apply there, and then we would publish this up to the service, and we would end up uh, where we started before with a data set just like this one, where you look at the refresh history, and again, the first time would take longer, in this case, two minutes, but the other ones are much faster because it's only doing one file at a time, I think 11 or 12 seconds. OK, so hopefully this technique helps you out uh, either specifically for combining files hosted on SharePoint. Um, but again, this technique could be used with um, any kind of file store or even you could get creative and use it with REST APIs or, or other scenarios as well. So hopefully it helps you out. Thanks.